If I offend you in this, I'm sorry. This is just how I feel. This tier list is purely based on how hard or how easy a character is to play. If you disagree, feel free to let me know in the comments. Let's get into it. Let's start things off with a no skill. Raiden is a 100% no skill, brain dead carried character. EX Storm Cell, no risk, full combo launcher that's safe on block. Forward 4, basically auto neutral. Jump back Superman full screen can barely be punished by like 95% of the cast. Do I even need to say any more? Like really? Safe overhead? It doesn't launch, but it's a safe overhead that's unreactable, so... Just for being Raiden and existing, after a certain period of time he takes less chip damage. Just because he's Raiden. Like, I feel like Raiden's probably the most carried character in the game, alongside the next character which we'll get into now. It's no surprise, Johnny Cage is straight in there. Probably one of the easiest characters of all time in Netherrealm history. Before we even get into his offense, let's talk about his defense. First defensive option, EX Shadow Kick. 8 frame armored move. Second defensive option, EX Nut Punch. Completely invincible. It does cost 2 bars, so I think it's fine. Doesn't really combo or anything like that unless you have a cameo. Third defensive option, EX Parry. This parry literally beats everything in the game except lows and jump-ins. If you try and press on Johnny, if you try and meaty Johnny, if you try to go for a mix-up, if he does parry, you literally get full comboed. And he can hold it to change the timing on how punishable it is anyway. So not only does he have some of the best movement in the game, in neutral he has forward one, which is a plus frame advancing high. That also gives him a full combo launcher if he commits to it. Once he's in, he's basically an infinite pressure machine. Technically, none of it actually jails, but it's always in Johnny's favor and it's kind of like an infinite loop. He's low-key like one of the only characters that doesn't really need a cameo to continue pressure. He has it on his own. On top of everything he has in neutral, his jump three is basically un anti aerial as well. If he hits you with a combo, he gets a safe jump so he can't wake up. And then all of the stuff I just said loops itself as well. So that's why I'm putting Johnny in no skill. 200 IQ, let's get it. Ashra, 200 IQ. Did anyone get baited? First character, 200 IQ, Natara. I know when you watch her gameplay or when you play against her, it doesn't feel like it's 200 IQ. It feels like the Natara players have no idea what's going on. She really doesn't have that much at all. I actually think she's the worst character in the game. She has pretty good damage, but every character in this game basically has damage. So it's not really like a good thing if you have damage. Her buttons kind of suck. She kind of has mix-ups, but she doesn't have any real true 50-50s that I know of. I've never played an Atara where I really feel like I'm actually getting 50 50 Nothing about her really seems easy or convincing that it's like easy to play. So shout out to the Natara players with 200 IQ. One of my favorite characters. Let's move Shang Tsung into the smart tier. I know a lot of you are going to say Shang is 200 IQ. In some ways, he might look 200 IQ. I've played Shang so much in this game. I'll be honest, he's not that hard. But I will say for sure, execution-wise and being consistent with him is pretty difficult. He's also kind of similar to Natara in a way where he doesn't really have many good mix-ups or plus frames. He's a pretty honest character for the most part. His zoning is so strong. His meterless damage is extremely high, so he doesn't really need to like... He doesn't struggle to make comebacks because of how high his damage is. The only real reason I'm putting him in the smart tier is because of the morph stuff. To really optimize the morphing stuff. So being able to consistently zone with him in this game is pretty hard. Not the easiest character, not the hardest character. If you're a Shang player, I consider you very smart. Up next, we're going to put someone into the easy tier. I'm going to put Katana. Not going to lie, she's on the borderline and no skill for me. Not going to lie, I'm being honest. Without a doubt, has like top three zoning in the game, especially with Kung Lao cameo. Katana works with almost any cameo in the game. She's actually very good. Like she can almost play every cameo and it works. If we're in neutral... Katana's here. If we're on offense or defense, Katana's like here. Overall, she's not no skill, but her neutral is pretty overpowered. Like, compared to most of the cast, she is beating most of the cast in neutral. So, I feel like there's some matchups in the game where Katana just absolutely destroys some characters. I think if you play Katana, you're pretty valid. I'm curious to see what you guys think about Katana. Let me know. I am an honest man. I do not lie to the people. I am an Astra main, and I am putting Astra in no skill alongside the other two. I'm not afraid to admit it. Neutral is probably like the best in the game, top two neutral in the game. Like 100%, not even a question, especially with Serena. Some of the best range in the game. She has multiple projectiles, insane damage, insane buttons. She ticks all the boxes in the game, literally. She has the overhead, she has the fireball she can sneak in, like, she's a very good all-round character. The most brain dead thing about her is her armored move, though. On top of everything she has, her armor move is like 6 hits of armor, so you can never really take your turn on her. A few characters in the game can punish it. Unless you read it with the other characters, you will not get a punish. So she basically has safe armor against like 80% of the roster. I'm carried by Asha 100%. Up next on the list, a character everybody considers low tier. I'm putting him in smart, and hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Low key, he's in the middle here. In neutral, some of the best neutral in the game. Amazing buttons. EX Spear is really good. He has teleport. I don't really use it too much, but it's pretty good as well. He has his back three full screen sweep. But when he has cameo like Striker, 
or like Sector. It's really, really easy, I'll be honest. Most of your game plan is based around just doing Death Spin into Cameo. The reason I'm putting him in Smite is because most of his hits do come from neutral. He actually doesn't have any real ways to open you up without taking risk. Getting with punishes, anti-airs, stuff like that. He doesn't have any mix-ups at all. Like, literally has no mix-ups and no plus frames. So, 100% an honest character. But for the most part, it's not that hard to really play him either. Up next, in Smart Tier, we're going to add another one to Smart Tier. I'm going to put Reptile in the Smart Tier as well. For sure, for sure, he's a pretty low tier character. Like, he's decent. When Reptile is invisible, he's actually quite strong because you literally can't see the character. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. He's not really that bad at anything, but he's not really that good at anything either. I'm just going to say it. Kung Lao players, I'm sorry. You're in no skill tier. Right next to me with Ashra. Kung Lao in this game. Where do I even start? Where do I start? Armored Launcher with Goro. Or even if you don't have your cameo available, you have a safe armored move anyway. Forward to his overhead. Unreactable Launcher. If he has Goro cameo, it's a safe launcher that gives him 35%. It's actually plus on block. And he can do sweep Goro to have a low launcher. Do I need to say more? Well, Waz, his neutral is not good, right? Dive kick has like zero recovery. Have you ever whiff punished a dive kick from Kung Lao? Ever? I'm going to tell you right now, you never have. Also, he has pretty good projectiles as well. His buttons aren't that great. I'll admit they're not great. He never really needs to press buttons at all. Let's do rain. Let's do rain. To be honest, I'm not 100% confident on where to put rain. I think rain might be smart tier. He's pretty hard, man. Rain is going into smart tier. In neutral, rain is pretty good. He has some good range. He has some pretty decent projectiles. They're not the fastest projectiles, but they work. Playing neutral with rain is not really the hard part. That's actually kind of the easy part. Rain has one string that has plus frames. Just one. The one thing that he has really good that's going for him is the overhead that's cancelable. Because he can combo from his grabs with a lot of cameos, and he can cancel the overhead into grab, that stuff is actually really good. I'm not too convinced there's anything too crazy with Rain. I think you have to work pretty hard to win with him, so I'm going to put him in the smart tier for now. Up next, we're going to talk about Havoc. I have to put my ego to the side a little bit and be realistic. I actually think he's in easy tier. He's not really hard to play at all. He's so easy to play. His buttons are insane. His zoning's really good. The only thing he doesn't really have is a good defensive option. Yes, he has that armor move, but it is a huge risk for that. When we look at Havoc on offense, it's pretty good. Neutral's quite good. Once he's playing neutral... It's low-key, no skill. It's so easy to win. Cameo-wise, is super easy. You basically just play the character the same as always. And then you just chuck one cameo in a combo. Not the most oppressive character in the game or anything like that, but a very strong character. Up next, we're going to do General Xiao. I would love to put him here, but I'm actually just going to put him in easy. If Xiao Kahn has the axe in his hand, he's in easy. Once that axe is on the ground, he's in no skill. 100%. 100%. In neutral with the axe, he's very good. He actually has really good neutral, but he has to take risk with the axe if he wants to really mix you up. He doesn't really have like a good mix up or anything like, like that with the axe. But it's so easy for him to get rid of the axe. Any combo, the axe is on the ground. He can drop it without doing a combo as well. He's very, very good with a bunch of cameos. Insane damage. I don't, I don't know. This character really ticks a lot of the boxes for me as well. The only thing about Xiao that's really a weakness is he doesn't have like a super fast mid. And his armor move is kind of trash. It's not the best. It's okay, but it's not great. I've been thinking Xiao is pretty strong for a while. But I have a read that this character is going to be like top 5 to 10. Maybe not top 5, but definitely top 10 range. Up next in the no skill tier... Tanya. 100% no skill tier. In neutral, some of the best neutral in the game. 4-2, her best mid goes really far. Literally the best mid in the game, I think. I don't think there's a better mid in the game. She has a great fireball, great range, air fireball. Her combos are super easy, let's be honest. Armored launcher with Goro. Safe armored move with Striker. Definitely one of the more brain dead characters in the game. Yeah, I mean, there's not too much else to say about her. She's really good at everything. This is coming from someone who used her a lot as well. She was going to be one of my mains, but this is why I stopped playing Tanya. Can I lose? Is it possible to lose here? It's possible, it's possible. No f***ing way. No! We're going to jump back into another no skill character. No hesitation. Reiko, I'm putting him in there. I don't care. Reiko players will say, oh, but I have to make Reed's command grab. Reiko is just throwing stars the entire game. Let's be honest. If I had someone that I needed to teach the game just to win a first to one, I'm showing them how to throw Reiko stars and that's it. He doesn't play any neutral besides stars. The command grab stuff is whatever. I'm not even really thinking about that. Like EX stars are the best projectile in the entire game. Reiko is just so simple. Throw stars, press a couple buttons and then throw stars again. Like, let's be real. Do I really need to say anything else? No, I don't. Sub-Zero got to be 200 IQ. Okay, let's talk about Sub-Zero. I think he's a pretty easy character. Easy to learn as well. Yeah, definitely. He's not like the traditional Sub-Zero that we always know, which was like a 50-50. In the old game, Sub-Zero is always no skill. I'm being honest. I think he's a pretty easy character still regardless. His neutral is not really that hard because he has the clone punch. He has clone, dive kick. His buttons are actually pretty decent as well. 
They are a little slow. Like his forward one is like 16 frames or 15 frames. He just doesn't have any insane mix-ups. That's the only thing he doesn't have. I will admit his damage is quite low. I don't know. I think he's fine. I think he's totally fine. What else What else is there really to say about him? Smoke. Oh. When smoke is visible, I think he's in the easy tier. When he's invisible, I don't care what any smoke player says. He's brain dead, no skill. I don't care. Because I actually think it's not that hard to win with him. That's kind of the point of this. Like his game plan is not really that hard. The execution on the cancels is a little bit tricky. I will admit that. He doesn't really play that much neutral. It's mainly get some rush down going. I really think this character is kind of dumb. If your execution is good enough, this character is very easy. No skill, low key. Okay, I'm putting Sindel in smart tier. I'm doing it. In some situations, she's very easy. But are we really going to say Sindel is as easy as a Havoc? Or Sindel is as easy as Xiao? I don't think so. I think she's pretty valid in here next to Rain, Reptile. Like, I feel like she fits this category very well. Sindel's neutral is not really that hard. Her fireballs are easy. Air fireball is great. EX air fireball. Low fireball. Low hat. Like... I could just keep going. Like, her neutral is really, really good. I think consistently being able to execute Sindel, making the right reads, I think it's actually pretty difficult. It's not that easy. It's quite hard to explain Sindel because there's a lot to her. It's really hard to say with Sindel because some of these harder blockable setup stuff, it low-key looks brain dead, no skill. But I've seen high-level Sindel play a lot, and I definitely don't think it's as easy as this. I feel like it's more in the smarter tier. If you guys don't agree, that's totally fine. I'm not even going to say my 100% right on this one. So, she's floating around here somewhere for me. Liu Kang... Yeah, he's easy tier. He's one of the easiest in easy tier. He's almost no skill. Almost, almost. Neutral is pretty easy with the character because you have Kung Lao cameo or whatever cameo you want. His fireballs are really good. His down three is really good. He has air fireball, EX fireball. That alone, he's actually great in neutral. His anti-air teleport is like unbeatable. So he has probably like the best anti-air in the game. Throw combos. Easy hit confirms from anything. Anytime he gets a hit, it's easy confirms. Plus frames by himself. He also has a six frame jab. A six frame jab that you can hit confirm into a full combo. Man, that's really all you need to say. Like that's a lot. It's really just not that hard to play him. It's super easy. I'm going to do Quan Chi next. Quan Chi, I'm putting him in Smarty. Let's put him next to Chang just to make the deadly alliance. I spent so much time playing this character. I feel like I know him almost better than anyone right now. First thing I'll say is he has 900 health. So similar to Natara, the amount of mistakes you can make is very low. His neutral is great. His projectiles are really, really good. That stuff for sure is really good. But on paper, Quan is one of the worst characters in the game though. 9 frame down one, 8 frame standing one, 14 frame mid that has no special cancel. Like you can't confirm it. His frame dot is terrible. In neutral, he's great. But on offense and on defense, he's pretty bad. When it comes to his damage and his conversions, outside of Serena cameo, it's very low. He gets like 30 max. Anytime you want to spend two bars, like if you want to extend your combos with that launcher, it's two bars and the damage is basically like never worth it. So when it comes to the projectile game though, he's definitely really easy. That's like the easy part. Surviving with Quan Chi is very hard. Similar to Natara. Up next, Garrus. I'm putting him in the easy tier as well. He's actually borderline in between here as well because of his one bar breaker. That thing is really, really dumb. If you're doing back shots, 200 IQ, any other time he's easy. For real though, I actually think he's quite an easy character, especially with Lau and Mataro. You really don't need to hit confirm most of his strings. With Lau cameo, they kind of just combo for you. The one bar breaker is the, really the big one. You spend a bar to get the full charge of the hourglass, and then anytime your opponent hits you, you can just break and you get health back. Yeah, I think he has the best command grab in the game. You can side switch with it, you can tick throw with it. He has some of the best conversions in the game, can combo from literally everything. Because he just has the time freeze, he can combo from everything in the game. Hourglass when it's charged is really cheap. The little snap of the fingers. There's really not much else to say, dude. Up next, we're putting Kenshi. I'm putting him with Natara and 200 IQ. Do not get the pitchforks out. Everyone relax. I'm not letting you disagree if you've never played Kenshi. I will 100% agree with you guys that Kenshi, when the Sento's out and you're blocking, is brain dead. Low key. But executing with Kenshi perfectly at high level consistently without making mistakes is so hard. Especially when you get into the really weird niche conversions, like the on the fly conversions. If they somehow survive the Sento stuff, he is really bad when he's in Sento stance without Sento out. At the end of the day, he's really a kind of a dumb 50-50 character. No denying that. No denying his 50-50s when you're in your sandwich is dumb. Actually controlling it all in real matches consistently is hard. High IQ does not mean he isn't broke. I think he's the best in the game, but I think he's the hardest character in the game. So take with that what you will. This is interesting actually, because I think Natara is the worst in the game and I think Kenshi's the best, but they're both 200 IQ. Moving on. I'm going to put Melina in the smart tier as well. High level Melina is actually quite hard in my eyes. I think Melina is in the smart tier because her best string gets floors blocked super easy. It might not sound like much or like one string can get floors blocked, big deal. 
It's basically the only string she has that actually opens people up. She has to press it. I don't care what anyone says. You have to press the string with Melina. Playing around that alone is actually really hard. In neutral, she's pretty decent. Her projectiles don't go full screen, which is whatever. It's not a big deal. Random ball roll still exists. I'm not going to lie. People still do that. Even the high level Melinas do that. I don't know. I'm not too sold on Melina being like that easy. I've played her quite a bit. I feel like it's a bit of work. I think Melina Tremor is low-key on the easy side. I don't know how legit it is just yet, but every time I've played it or played against it, I'm putting her here. So I'm just going to put her in smart tier for now, but she could definitely float around this tier for sure. Omni-Man. Oh, great. Okay, let's think about Omni-Man. Let's think, let's think. Is there anything hard about Omni-Man's neutral? Okay, there's nothing hard about his neutral. He really doesn't play neutral at all, actually, especially with Lao Cameo. Also, his armor moves goes like half screen. Omni-Man combos, easy. Let's be real. Let's just be honest. Look at his game plan and how Omni-Man players use him. I am not thinking when I play Omni-Man, never. Uh, do we need to say anything else? All right, Baraka. OG Baraka Sarax for sure was in the no skill tier. Nowadays, he's in easy. I'm not gonna lie, he's pretty brain dead. He's actually like really easy, but he's not strong enough or like really that scary enough in my eyes to be no skill. Pretty basic character, nothing too crazy. Damage is really good, combos are really good. His block strings are pretty decent. But like, when you really think about how hard it is to play him, it's very easy. I'm putting Lee Mei in easy tier, right next to Baraka. Almost every button of Lee Mei's is plus on block. I'm not even kidding, go look at the frame data. Almost every string is plus on block. I'm not exaggerating. Lee Mei's projectiles are really good. You can chuck in an EX there every now and then. If it hits, you get a combo. With the lantern up, once the lantern's up, they literally can't jump at all. And then you can just throw projectiles all day. There's not really that much they can do about it. Anytime this character hits you, it does like 35% minimum. Then when it comes to her buttons, yes, they're not the best in neutral. But she doesn't really need those crazy buttons in neutral because she has everything else covering neutral for her already. When it comes to your offense, her offense is great. She has really good plus frames. All of her strings are really easy to hit confirm into like at least 40%. But with Scorpion, you're getting 40 every time easily. Borderline 50%. Besides Sindel, Lee Mei is the only character who can actually reversal punish pokes. With Scorpion, for example, or with some cameos, if you block a poke, you can literally flip kick it and get a full combo. Really, really strong punish game. I haven't even mentioned her instant overhead, which is unreactable, by the way. Her buttons are definitely not the best, but that doesn't mean she's a hard character to play. That's how I feel about Lee Mei. That's how I feel about the whole roster, actually. That's everyone in the game right there. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Disagree? It's fine if you don't agree with me. I'm totally fine with that. But just let me know why. I want to know why. No bias from me. I even got my main character in the no skill tier. So yeah, let me know what you guys think.